This is a joint work with Habishek Jain, Adriana Lopez Halt, Aran Tromer, Vinod Vaikontanatan, and Daniel Wicks. And in secure multi party computation, we have some set of parties, each has private input, and they wish to compute some joint function of their inputs without revealing any unnecessary information. FHE provides us, fully homomorphic encryption provides us a really nice and simple template for secure two party computation. Charlie creates the keys, send the public key together with encryption of its input to Sally. Sally encrypts her input and then homomorphically evaluate the function on the ciphertext, on the encrypted inputs, get an evaluated ciphertext Y, send it back to Charlie who has the decryption key and can decrypt and learn the result. So that's it, that's the old protocol. It's really simple and nice protocol. In addition, this protocol has several advantages over regular and uh, classical MPC protocols. First of all, it has really low round complexity. We have only two rounds. We have one message from Charlie to Sally and one message back, and that's it. In addition, it has really low communication complexity. All the information that it sends is the public key, encryption of input, and encryption of output. And that's it. In particular, it's independent of the function f on the complexity of the function that the parties compute. Third, it has really low computation. Charlie is lazy, he doesn't do anything, he just creates keys, decrypts, and that's it. And it's really, really simple template. It's really easy to understand why it's secure and what is going on. And our question is, how can we take all these advantages to the multi-party case? In the multi-party case, we have one party that creates the keys, one party is, should do the, the homomorphic evaluation. The party that does the homomorphic evaluation should have all the encryptions of all the inputs. When those two parties collude, the one that does the homomorphic evaluation, the one that holds the secret key, once they, do, they both collude, they learn anything. They learn all the inputs of all the other parties. So how can we get all these advantages in the multi-party? So the idea is to use what we call a threshold fully homomorphic encryption. Here, the key generation is now a functionality or interactive protocol and no longer an algorithm. The parties invoke this key generation functionality. Who creates the keys sends back the parties the joint public key together with a share of the secret key. So no one knows the secret keys, but we have the information in the system. Later, the parties can do the homomorphic, the input encryption. Each party can take the input and encrypt it under the joint public key, send it to all other parties. Later, the party can do, given all, each party, given all the, all the encryptions of inputs, can homomorphically evaluate the function on the ciphertext and get a joint ciphertext, a common evaluated ciphertext Y. We can assume that a homomorphic evaluation is a deterministic function, so all the parties get the same value. We can also uh, delegate this step to a cloud. We can send it to a server, an external server that does this homomorphic evaluation, and so all the parties and the, the server send back the parties the evaluated ciphertext. Then, Given the common ciphertext Y and share of the secret key, the parties come to the decryption. Again, the decryption now is a functionality and not an algorithm. The parties send to the functionality the, shell, the, the common ciphertext Y together with the shells of the secret key. The functionality reconstructs the secret, reconstruct the secret key and decrypt the value and send back the parties the message M. So for conclusion, the MPC protocol is simply threshold key generation, which is now a functionality that creates joint public key, share of the secret key. The parties encrypt their input, homomorphically evaluate the function, and then we have, again, the threshold decryption, which is now a functionality. So given an implementation for fully homomorphic encryption, and given this template that we just showed, we can implement the threshold key generation and threshold uh, 
a description using generic multi-party computation techniques like GMW and stuff like that. So this approach already gives us several advantages. advantages. First of all, we have low communication complexity. The communication complexity is independent of the function f. It, a homomorphic evaluation, as we have seen, can be easily delegated to a cloud. We can also get a low computation. It has several disadvantages. First of all, we need to use the heavy machinery of the MPC technique, of the general MPC technique. We need to use GMW with all the zero knowledge at each step. And, and in addition, we can also have the run complexity can be very high, which is uh, since we use generic MPC, we can do it in a constant round, but the constants may be not a nice constant to work with. So what we show in the paper, we show how we can implement threshold keygen, threshold decryption, we show a concrete implementation for those two functionalities for the scheme, for the recent scheme of Barkevsky and, Vi and, Vi and Vinod, and Barkevsky, Gentry, and Vinod. Uh, this, this already gives us the advantages like uh, we had before, low communication complexity and uh, easy, the ability to delegate the computation to external server. But in addition, our scheme is really simple. There is no need for the generic MPC technique. And most importantly, we achieve, our protocol achieves a really, an extremely low round complexity. Our protocol is only free broadcast rounds. The question of round complexity and what is the minimal number of rounds that we can construct protocol is a theoretically interesting question. And we showed the first free rounds protocol for any function, the general, the protocols general can compute any function. So we showed the first free rounds protocol in the CRS model in the common reference string model. In addition, uh, our protocol is uh, only two rounds in the public key infrastructure, which is optimal. Our results holds for the same ionist and the malicious as well, where in the malicious we also we get UC security for any number of corrupted parties, but we need to add the assumption of using NISC, the existence of non-interactive zero knowledge. And if you want to do this delegation to a cloud, we, in addition, need to, the cloud should prove that he has computed the correct function, so we need to prove, to need to assume CS proofs and succeed non-interactive arguments, but we don't have to assume it if we can do it by each party evaluate the function by himself. Some words about related work. Uh, CDN were the first to show MPC with threshold homomorphic encryption. In those days, there was no FHG yet. Gentry, in 2009, among some other things, showed how to do MPC with using threshold FHG. Bendin and Damgard show how to do threshold version for LWE, which our scheme is also uh, relies on the same assumption. We took ideas from that paper. Katz and Ostrovsky show a lower bound of five rounds for MPC in the plane model, which means that the CRS is essential in order to get three rounds. And we have a concurrent world that show another threshold version of another FHG scheme. So I'm starting with the details. I'm starting with the LWE assumption, the learning referral assumptions. Here we have two distributions, and we assume that they are indistinguishable. The first distribution, each sample of the first distribution is simply the uniform distribution, it's, it's simply the uniform. The second distribution, we have some secret S that we choose uniformly at random. And each for each sample, we choose AI to be the uniform. We took some small error, and we compute VI to be the inner product of AI with S, with the secret S. And we add this noise EI. So we, we, this, the LW assumption says that those two distributions are indistinguishable. It's hard, hard to distinguish. 
recall, uh, observe that with the error, it's really easy to, to, to distinguish. All we need to do is just Gauss elimination. So the LWE, um, one can show that the LWE is also hard once we take Q, Q to be odd, and we choose the error to be small and even. So given this assumption, we can build, can build a basic uh, encryption scheme. The symmetric key, the secret key is simply S. In order to encrypt a bit mu, what we do is just take a uniformly random A and compute the inner product of A with S, add some even noise, add the message mu. In order to decrypt, what we take is we need we need to create, our ciphertext includes A and B. We know the secret key S, and so in order to equip, we need to compute the inner product of A with S. Once we remove that from B, we are left with some even noise plus mu. We take everything mod two, and we, we get only mu. For the public key, we do the generic transformation. The secret key, again, is just S. The public key is just a bunch of encryptions of zero, and so it likes, once we have a bunch of encryptions of zero, it, likes, it, it is like we take a matrix A, multiply with S, and take an even, an even vector of noise. This is exactly what we have over here. In order to encrypt, what we do is just we take a random subset sum of the public key, and we add our bit mu. So this is the encryption scheme. And ciphertext under the symmetric key and ciphertext under the public key looks exactly the same, meaning we have some coefficient a, inner product of a with s plus even noise plus mu. So this basic scheme has really nice keyomomorphic properties. If we take two public keys, the one is corresponds to secret key S1, the other is corresponds to secret key S2, but those two public keys were made under some joint coefficient, under some joint parameter A, the same matrix A. Once we take those two public keys and we add them, we get a new public key, a joint public key, that corresponds to the summation of the secret keys. Okay, so we create a new public key from existing public key. Uh, this is really close the, to what we have in Al Gamal, that we can take public keys and combine them into a joint public key. So given this, we can show the threshold key generation for this basic scheme quite easily. Each part just creates its own secret key. And according to some joint parameter, random matrix A that we have in the sky in the CRS, each party can cre create its own public key send it, and so at the end of this round, all the parties can do locally the summation, the sum of all those public keys, and get a joint public key, which corresponds to the summation of the secret keys. And in fact, this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to create somehow a joint public key from the public keys, and to have a secret key to have the teach party, we'll have a share of the secret key. And since we have summation of secret keys, this is exactly n out of n secret sharing. So in addition to the key generation, we can also have threshold decryption quite easily. What we have, we have some joint ciphertext, A and B, all the parties knows this joint ciphertext, where B is encrypted under the joint secret key, under S tau, which is the summation of the secret key. Recall that in order to decrypt, what we need to do is to compute the inner product of A with S tau. And so we need to somehow create this inner product, and no one knows S tau, so how can we do that? So the idea is that given this coefficient A, each party just compute the inner product of A with his own secret key, add some even noise, send it, and at the end of this operation, we get exactly the inner product of A with the summation of the secret key, with the joint secret key. 
and we, each body can compute locally B minus V, which gives it some even noise. Plus mu, take everything mod two, and we are left with mu. Uh, we need to play a little bit with the noises because this gives some information about the original noise that we have in the ciphertext, but we can do that. We can play with the noise and do exactly this, this, uh, this protocol for decryption. So we show how we do threshold key generation, threshold decryption. Each takes only one round for the basic scheme, but the basic scheme is not fully homomorphic. What we need is fully homomorphic encryption. Uh, so let's see the scheme. The basic scheme has, is, is additively homomorphic, but when we come to multiplication, it's a little bit more complicated. We can't just take two ciphertexts and multiply them and take and get a nice uh, ciphertext like we want. So here we have a recent work by BV and BJV that shows that once we have all the multiplications, once we have all the products of the secret key, all the pearls SISJs, all those encryptions public, we can take two ciphertexts and do some magic that gives us the a, a cipher which uh, hides the multiplication of the, the ciphertext. This is simplified, I'm cheating, but we can do that. And what it means for us, it means that we need to, ge to generate all those encryptions in threshold manner, meaning that the body needs to create all the products of the joint secret key. Uh, recall that the joint secret key is simply the summation of the secret keys. We need to create all the encryptions of the product S star i with S star j. Now, if we plug in just write instead of S star i, we write the summation of the secret keys. What we, are, what we should make is encryptions of all of that. Since the scheme, our scheme is additively homomorphic, we can move the sigma outside. And in fact, what we get is just encryptions of all the pearls SKI with SLJ, meaning that it's enough to create the encryption the i positions of party K secret key with the j positions of party L secret key. Once we have all this information, we can come back to S star i and S star, with S star j. So I'm going to show, to show how to do that in three rounds, although in the paper we do it in two rounds. So in the first round, we call that the parties create joint public key. This is what we had before with the matrix A. In the second round, what each party does is just it takes its secret, its secret key and encrypts each element, each position of its own secret key. All the parties do that and send it, and at the end of this round, all the parties know all the, the single positions of the secret key, the encryptions of all the single positions of the secret keys of all parties. In the third round, what we'd like to do is to take these elements, for each one of those elements, SKI, we want to multiply in SLJ. We want to get all the encryptions of SKI with SLJ. So we do that for each one of the encryptions that we had before. Each party just multiply in all the, all the positions of its own secret key. Essentially, you can do that because the scheme is additively homomorphic, which means that we can add ciphertext which also means that we can multiply with a constant. Once we know the constant and we have, we have the encryptions, we just, just, it's like multiply with a constant, it's like we add the same, constant, the same number of time, the, the, the encryption. And so we get all the parties do the same. And so at the end of this round, we have all the encryptions of SKI with SLJ. And as we mentioned before, this is enough to create the encryption of S star i with S star j. So this is the basic, this is the scheme. I'm uh, repeating the protocol just, uh, just for conclusion. What we have in round one, in the first round, the parties established the joint public key. 
In the second round, each party creates encryption of single positions of its own secret key. At the round three, each party multiplies in all the SLJ. And at the end of this round, the parties can compute S star I with S star J. In the paper, we show how we can combine the first round and the second round and get the key generation of two rounds total. So we get only two rounds key generation, one round for decryption. And so the overall MPC protocol, we have threshold key generation of two rounds, where in the first round, the parties creates the public key plus some information for the evaluation key. At the end of round two, they finish the, the, the creation of the evaluation key. Now, recall that the parties need to encrypt their inputs, but the public key is already ready after the first round, and so the parties can encrypt their inputs after the second round of Kijan together concurrently with the second round of Kijan. Okay, so after the second round, all the parties know the public key, evaluation key, and decryption of the inputs of all other parties. Moreover, the threshold decryption takes one round, and we are done. We have only three rounds MPC protocol. Uh, some words about the malicious. So we showed how to do that in, for the semi-honest. We assume that the parties follow the protocol. For the malicious, we can uh, just take the generic transformation, which means that we need coin tossing for the random tapes of all the parties. We want uniformly coins for all the, the random tapes. Plus, uh, take uh, zero knowledge or non-interactive zero knowledge. This will give us the problem with this approach that increases the round complexity and the generic non-interactive zero knowledge is, are not efficient. What we do in the, the paper, we show that the coin tossing is not necessary, meaning that in some critical parts in the protocol, the parties, the honest parties can smudge out bad noise of the corrupted parties by adding some bigger noise. And so if you use bad randomness, it can only hurt you because it gives some information about your secrets. And so we save the, 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 the coin tossing. In addition, we show efficient sigma protocols for all the zero knowledge relations that we have in our, in our protocol, which means that we can get non-interactive zero knowledge, efficient non-interactive zero knowledge in the random oracle model. So for conclusion, we show a threshold fully homomorphic encryption based on LWE. In the paper, we also have a variant for the ring LWE, which is more efficient. We get three rounds multi-party uh, protocol. It's only two rounds in a PKI, and it's also reusable, meaning that we can take the same PKI and compute again and again over different functions. Our protocol has really low communication complexity, low run complexity, easy to delegate, and that's it. Thank you very much. Questions? Please use microphone. Thank you. So you may have been getting this some in the last slide, but I'm, I want to understand a little bit better whether you can get a true threshold k out of n system out of this. Yeah, um, we can do that. With, we we with, also show that in the paper. And, and how, how does that affect the efficiency? Efficiency? Yeah. It's um, in terms of round, number of rounds, it can, you can get five rounds in total hmm. uh, because you need to record just in order to get T out of N, each party just needs to do T out of N for its own secret key and send it to the others. And we also get fairness for honest majority. Um, so it means that when parties come to the, someone has cheated when we want to, or abort and we want to reconstruct its secret, so we need additional round of this reconstruction. So we take five rounds in total. One for the key gen, one for the decryption. Thanks. Other questions?
Okay, let's thank Gerard and all other speakers in this session. <laughs>